Love 30. A nervy start from Demon Hall. Engine had worked uh, pre season in, in Monte Carlo, came down to Australia, spent a couple of days in Sydney working with Leighton Hewitt and Tony Roach before coming over to Perth on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day in Perth. challenging event for these players to come out and to meet another no, top 14. 20 player in your very first match of the season. Oftentimes players play in regular tournaments like what will be going on in Brisbane this week. The, they would be seated and not face someone of this caliber straight away. So you have to get up and running in a hurry. And Nori has done that and has created three break points. Well, that looked well in. Electronic line calling here. It's automated. So there are no lines officials on the ground. You cannot challenge a call. You can see a close call on review, but well, the chair umpire seems to be trying to contact the uh, technical team. And that was an incorrect call. So it's a first serve coming. Yeah, we've got a couple little glitches today. Just like everybody at the beginning of the new season, just easing their way in is the uh, electronic line calling system. Two of the flattest backhands in men's tennis tonight between Nori and Demonor. Nori will create a little more topspin on his forehand than Demonor in general. So for Alex, there is a little bit more risk in his game. His, his ball is a bit lower over the net on average than Nori's. Sharpness matters. So a good start for Great Britain, but a tentative start from Alex Dimonor. First game. And you worry a little bit about that with Alex because his game, it doesn't have a lot of cushion in it because it doesn't have a lot of top spin over the net, a lot of work on the ball. If he's not sharp, he can do that. He can find the tape on the backhand in particular and put himself in strife. Good advice there from Leighton to just try and work the point a little bit early here and find his feet underneath him. Yeah, it's a, a fine line sometimes for him with being aggressive, isn't it? He has to, he feels he has to take points on against the bigger players, but then the margin of error becomes so much lower for him. So first look at the Norrie service action here tonight. Magnificent evening here in Perth. Cam Norrie, it's, it's been a story of consistency, consistency from a ranking standpoint the last three seasons. He's finished inside the top 20 
all three. Very high level. Very low. It's one of the guys who really worked his tail off during the COVID forced break. Really went to work on his lungs, his legs, and his game and came out flying soon thereafter. I've noticed over the years that does work effectively against Nori because of the way he strikes the ball with a lot more topspin on the forehand than on the backhand side is if you want to get a shot to play offense on, you actually have to hit the ball at Nori's forehand. Then he'll hit a, a high looping ball, relatively speaking. Then you can take it up and go after it. His backhand, very difficult to attack because it's so low. But it's interesting you say that because uh, I caught up with 40, 15. Uh, Alex uh, after his warm up and said, what, do you, what will you be looking to do? And he made that point that he'll have to go hard into the forehand to get the ball to be able to attack on. So he's aware of it. It's just uh, the execution. Yep. Two games, pull up. So Nori consolidates the early break of serve. And finally, a little bit more timing within that rally was Demon Or. Let's see, uh, unforced error count. Alex, six against zero winners. Nori, only one winner, but two unforced errors and just a little bit more margin for error in his shots, making the difference so far. Important game here for Australia to get a little footing. Lucky Demon Hall because uh, Very low. Norrie should have been able to get strings on the ball here. And he catches it in the throat and flips at it. And hold the racket face on the ball for long enough. match where from my eyes it feels like Alex is trying to force it just a wee bit too much early on here and playing longer points right now I think might help them like if the opportunity to hit it's there take it no. 
you can get the quick points all the better, but if it's not there, you just have to work your way into it. Cool team, 15. That's what makes Nori so tough, Todd. He is willing to play long, long points. There's that backhand that you talk about, Jim. He wanted to take the forehand on, but you see where the strike was. It was knee high, almost shin high. And you need to get the racket underneath the ball. So he doesn't really get underneath it there. It's at almost level and then can't get the spin required to clear the net. For Team Australia. But it is Team Great Britain with an early break, 2-1, first set. Team Great Britain leads two games to one. Great positive energy there. Love hearing you. And here's the, the captain player capacity of how you treat each player. Doesn't like a ton of information, Alex, when he sits there. So Leighton likes to talk and give energy, and he has to hold himself back in this scenario. Captain Leighton Hewitt really uh, delivering a few messages, trying to get his player up in Alex Dimonor, but uh, he just loves the competition. And you can see it oozing out of him, Leighton, can't you? Jim, if he, if he could, he'd still be out there. No question about it. And he looks like he could. Looks quite fit, ready to go, but just imparting that wisdom. Go, and hoping it makes the difference for Dimonor to get back on serve here after a little bit of a sluggish start. as more of the, the audience takes their Thank seats you. here. Filling up nice. Nice. Yeah, terrific opening night session here at the RAC Arena. Got all the draw cards, Team Australia here. You have got Team Serbia led by world number one, Novak Djokovic. And of course, Team Poland, the number one seeds with Iga Świątek and uh, Hubert Hercatch. Talking about Jim. Let's set the bide your tie time against Nori's defense and his patience and persistence. So Dimonor has that capability, the rally tolerance required. And finally unloads on that forehand. you want you actually want if you're, if you're team Australia you want Nori feeling like he needs to do more the first three games of this match Nori was sitting back being patient only hit one winner and yet was in control now all of a sudden after that first point starting to feel the pressure of finishing and he finished it off with an unforced error
that had it all. Well, if you would have thought it was going to be over right here. This was going to be an easy put away and then bang, it lands on the tape and he has to make a decision, doesn't do enough with it. So now it was Dimonor that was in control of the point. But another wonderful defensive lob from Norrie gets him back. From Love 30. 15.30, that could have been big for Team Australia. This might be a big turnaround for Nori. That forehand finds its mark. Still up in the aggression. The Brit levels it at 30 apiece. But it takes a high quality shot to beat Alex's foot speed. He is so fast in defending the court. to Eager, smothers the back end. Yeah. So a big hole from up 30 down, got John Fitzgerald uh, courtside and uh, Fitzy, interesting from up here, and you'll have a better perspective, the shape of the Nori forehand. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's quite telling, actually. Uh, Jim mentioned it earlier, and it, you know, when you sit at courtside, you see how high the ball goes over the net. You see the spin imparted on the ball, and there's a significant difference. The, the Nori forehand really loops, and it changes speed, forward speed as well, but by the amount of loop he puts on it. I think when he hits the off forehand, he can flatten it out a bit more and probably do a bit more damage, but quite often when he hooks it across court to the right hand is back and it's slowed down by that loop but it's safer because of that and, if, and Alex at the moment really is hitting low trajectory over the net he hasn't quite found his range yeah, he found that opportunity fits that was sitting up that return to serve and Alex dealt with it beautifully but this, this match is going to require discipline on the Australians' part because Nori has that, that aspect in spades. He's a very patient player. Alex is going to need to match that patience. Very low. But it's so normal for players to be so excited as they get their campaign underway, especially representing their country. Team Australia still down a break. Team Great Britain ahead 3 2 in this opening match. Team Great Britain leads against 2 2. Tell me, Chimmy, but Alex Dimmel wishes that he could just sort of restart that opening game. The feet didn't quite work, some unforced errors is put. 
pressure on himself here, settling in. Good energy coming off of the bench from Leighton Hewitt as ever. Some all time alongside Demon Orn, various team competitions. Colin Beecher, the team captain for Great Britain this year. Tim Hinman and occupied that seat. There's not a on the move this year. Facundo Lagones alongside. Well, this is Group C in the United Cup for 2024, a group that includes these two teams, Australia, Great Britain, and the United States, one of the strongest groups within the competition. USA, obviously, the favorites with Taylor Fritz and Jessica Pagula. Time. But both Australia and Great Britain have the ability to do some damage. And you can see really good crowd here tonight, the RSC Arena. And when you get the full house here, it really does have a wonderful atmosphere. One of the great arenas to play in. It'll be Kem Norrie coming up to serve with the break. 3-2, opening set. Interesting for me, sometimes with Alex, he has a very good slice backhand, Jim. It, he uses it defensively. I think there are occasions in matches where he could actually use it as a, an offensive mm -hmm. shot as well. And particularly here against Norrie to break things up a little bit. We, we talk about Norrie's backhand being difficult, but a slice backhand short into the into Norrie's backhand can change the whole element. He'd take a bit of pace off. He can also tack off that. But I think he feels to get to the, the top 10 that you've mentioned, he has to stay really aggressive and positive and doesn't really use it in the repertoire as much. I can tell you that I absolutely unequivocally disagree with that philosophy for him. I don't think of outright aggression is the way that he plays his best tennis. Selective aggression is when he plays his best tennis. I thought you were having a crack at me there for a moment. Well, uh, um, wait, I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> it's only day one. <laughs> Game team Britain. Big hole, love hole. Team Green Britain leads four games to two. So sometimes to improve yourself, you think you have to do new things, more things, don't you? But in actual fact, what you're saying is, is you've got your game style, use that maybe add a pinch of salt and a bit of dust here that might help. Sure, look. He has plenty of firepower when the ball is sitting up to hit it. What Alex does not have is the ability to attack from a, a low ball. Plenty of pop on that backhand from mid-chest height, he can drive the ball with his flat shot production. I want to get too technical here, but it's pretty simple. Players with the extreme grips on the forehand, think about Rafa Nadal, even Nori. If you get the ball low, they can still accelerate and hit the ball hard, hard, hard. Beautifully done there. Again, another backhand up in the strike zone, working the forehand to get the shot to attack. But if you hit a ball low to, to Demonar's forehand, as we've seen in this match, he doesn't have enough topspin on the ball to play aggressively with any kind of safety. It's just an unforced error festival. So he's got to shy away from that. Yeah, he's starting to pick up the pace nicely here in these service games, though.
That's back to back lock yeah. games on serve for the Australian. And Team Britain still in front with the break. 4 3, first set. Team Britain leads four games for three. More change, please. If you haven't been to the west, to Perth and Western Australia, I recommend it. This is uh, just off the edge of the city, really, about 20 minutes away from downtown. This is Cottesloe and Scarborough Beaches, some of the most glorious beaches you can get in Australia. There's a wonderful Indian tea house at Cottesloe and plenty of surfing and swimming to be had. Of course, Rottnest Island, just uh, off the coastline too. And that's worth a great day trip. All the players have been over there, including Novak Djokovic earlier today. So feel like it feels like the match is sort of set in its pattern. Just a very poor start as Jim and I here. And I wonder, Jim, sometimes the, the little bit of scar tissue from playing in this event last year, losing that match three and three on this surface, that's, that's what he's going to do with a nervous and tentative start. Things certainly looking brighter for Team Australia here after that slow start. But Norrin will serve with new balls and a break of serve in hand. Really smart serve, jamming serve, only at 166 Ks because of the left-handed slice, slides into that right hip of Dimonor, cramping his style. Put it low. Four successive block games on serve. Has phenomenal spot serving as well. The body serve, the wide serve. Not really known to be one of the game's great servers is Nori, but that was a, a great exhibition of what precision serving can do for you. See what you're feeling about what uh, Alex might need to do to kind of get his teeth a little bit more into this one. Yeah, you know, Jimmy, it feels like the court's a fraction quicker than I expected, and it, it, it just feels like he's catching the ball late too often to me. You know, especially off the backhand of, of Norrie when it stays low, and he, 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 his timing is off there. But I, but I think you know, he knows his game plan, and and. I, I wouldn't attack his backhand as much Get as his forehand because the backhand's so solid. He takes it early and he doesn't miss it, or rarely so. And and the ball is deeper on that side when he hits a backhand. So it comes in deep and shoots through. And then the next ball for Alex is hard to attack. So I think he's still got to persevere with that you know, into the forehand philosophy and, and try to get a shorter 
spinning your return so he can attack it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be afraid to mix the speed up on his first serve either. Go to the forehand with a three-quarter kick occasionally and see if that draws a short return. Just mix it up a little bit. He goes for the same serve a lot of the time. But I think overall, Jim, I think he's just not happy yet with how the ball feels on his racket. I think th there's, there's not a, a ton of confidence there yet. He's, he's just feeling his way and there's too many miss hits. going to make Cam Norrie serve for the opening set when we come back after the break. It's Team GB leading Team, team Australia 5-4. Five five so here's that last point once again. Good swinging serve taking Norrie out of court which leaves that line open. Gets a racket head round the outside of the ball to curl it back in. And a beautifully structured point. And that gives the home crowd something to cheer about. And at the moment, Norrie doing a terrific job, Jim, of just closing them out and not keeping them, uh, or making them a part of it. Well, when you, you keep having hold service games, it does kind of keep the tension on the Team Australia side of the net. And Norrie taking care of his business beautifully. He's coming out of the blocks flying in his opening match of uh, this season. In the United Cup, the 2024 edition. Obviously, we haven't had uh, the New Year start yet, but the tennis season has got itself underway. Nine. United Cup being played in Perth and Sydney, with the finals being played in Sydney at the end of the tournament. Obviously, but plenty of matches to go through before we get to that. Earlier today, Spain defeated Brazil in Group A, the first match of the competition for the season. And this is Cam Norrie serving for the first set at 5 4. Norrie is having a great day on serve so far, serving at 70% first serves in play and has yet to lose a point when he's made a first serve. Something that Team Australia takes a look at as far as where Alex is standing to return serve just to try and shake up Nori's rhythm. Sometimes that's all it takes to get someone out of a good serving groove is if you give them a different picture to look at down the court. Right now, Demonor crowding the baseline on the return, not having any success. 40 low. He's just not able to control the return, is he? He's off balance majority of the time. So very quickly, it is three set points for Team Great Britain. Only one required, and yeah, Cam Murray first holds to team love. Britain. And in 35 minutes, it is six Team to four. Great Britain. They have the lead, six games to four. Well, it was a clean opening set. A, a bit of a soft start, you would say, from Alex Demonor giving up that first break. 
but let's take a look at the first set summary and you talk about serving well 70 percent will get the job done particularly then you win 100 percent of those first serves jim yeah man the winners to unforced errors seven winners for nori against just the four unforced errors demonor was trying to fight through that with offense but seven winners and 12 unforced for the aussie that was a vacuum packed set from team gb excellent level of tennis from nori this was the fun point this was the one that could have led to the break of serve. This would have given love 40 for Dimonor had he have been able to get this overhead out of the reach of Nori. But that was a great defensive lob. It's a 50-50 guess which way was he going. Nori was there, and then he was able to somehow wiggle out of that and hold his way through to the end of the set. So great effort from Cam Nori. And, uh, some signs of life from Alex Dimonor as the set went on. He started to hold his serve a little more comfortably, and he'll need to do that again here to get things going in set two. Well, welcome to the United Cup for 2024. Big crowd in RAC Arena hoping for Australia to get through the home team obviously but Cam Norrie he's one of those players that does not get at all flustered about playing in front of big Time. crowds playing big names he just he has that ability Jim to go out and just play the ball on its merit and not get caught up in you know the various scenarios that can happen yeah, Norrie, at this stage at this age 28 years old he's seen a lot and he's not going to be intimidated or overawed by anything he's looking at this as an opportunity and so far so great for team great britain One thing that we do know is that Alex will not go away. His levels will continue to get better within the match, and his competitive spirit is one of his greatest assets. Incredible movement from Demonor. The court coverage, superb. 30-15. This was a great down the line backhand, but look at the way he slides into the ball and he's already moving in the right direction as it's coming off his racket. And he got unlucky with that net cord. His instinct, Jim, to cover the next ball in the right position of the court is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, right where he needed to be, just unlucky with that ball clipping the tape.
Alcázar. This is good tennis. You know, Todd, from down here, it just feels like, you know, that old feeling when you hadn't played a you haven't played a match for several weeks and it, you feel like it's the first match of the season for you. Well, Demon Hall looks like that to me, whereas Norrie looks like he's got a dozen matches under his belt. He's barely made an error. Timing the ball beautifully. Thirty fourteen, And so, from 30 love, he finds himself under pressure again in his opening service game. Remembering he dropped that first service game and could not recover in the opening set. Exactly the type of point that Demonor needs to be determined enough to stay in with and not take too much risk. This was the shot that broke it open for him. The angled forehand, Nori tried to go around the net post and couldn't do it. That's a big save, massive save in the opening game of the second set. There, but for Nori, just to be in this game, having the down 30 law, those good signs for him, too. Well, Alex is uh, questioning the, the line caller here, but with um, well, the technology, the first one looked on top of the line to me. I'm sitting almost adjacent to the baseline. Second one was definitely long, but he's just a bit edgy. momentum in this match for Team Australia. First game, set, set. The issue, though, is how does he find a way into the Nori service game? Remembering he had lump 30 in the fourth game and then that uh, kind of really weird point that could have gone both ways and given him lump 40, and then from there on, Nori has dominated. Well, I think it, it would be interesting to see him try a, a slightly different return to serve position. I think moving a little deeper, like Nori has done at times against Alex's serve, to give him a little more time, get into the point and go to work. Something different, clearly. Um, both of these teams have right access ball, to right. tablets right with statistics in the team zones. They could see exactly that Nori is yet to drop a point on first serve. That streak continues, and as does Alex, his up close return to serve position. I'd like to see him go back where he's standing right about now, if we got a camera on him, and just challenge Nori to beat him from there. But he's going to come back to where he likes to be, try and take away the wide angle. Pushed from pillar to post, Dimonor. It's actually 
59. what you'd like to see from him. That's the sort of tennis that gets him up and going. And then builds pressure on Norrie because he can't get the ball past him on the baseline. So you feel like you have to do something to win the point, which can draw an unforced error like that. This form from Nori, it, it's impressive. And if you look closely at his 2023 campaign, it's even more so because he was really good the first half of 2023. Won a ton of matches. He only won five matches from Wimbledon. 14, until now. 15. Which is, for a player of his quality, it would suggest that there's a massive confidence slump. But that's what a new year can bring, isn't it? It's, it, it's somehow you have this ability to kind of wipe the slate clean and leave it behind. And Australia does that for many players. Game team Gilbert. You're one of the great mentor, the players, that players of your the era, well. Jim. Now, why, our era, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> why is that? So, why in that sense, more? that if you why, why couldn't you do it to see, you know, a random week throughout the year? Say, I've had enough now. I'm going to restart and go ahead. But it doesn't happen that way. No, humans like the the clean start of the the calendar year. Funny, isn't it? Yeah. I think there's a freshness too when you get down to Australia. There's a difference with the temperature, the weather, after coming out of a European and oh. North American cold oh, climate. I just came from Los Angeles today. It, it gets dark at 4.30 mm. in the Northern Hemisphere. It's gonna be light here a long time in Perth tonight. Here we go. Come on. Love. Well, that's obviously where he's dangerous, isn't it, uh, Alex? And that's how he likes to play. You know, so often he f probably feels like a featherweight going against heavyweights in this modern men's game. But if he gets a short ball here, he tries to put it away. It's just getting the short ball. Maybe, maybe the return of serve is his best chance. Jim, is there any similarity here with the Norrie backhand and that very famous of American oh, Jimmy Connors? Yeah, he, 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 there is. The similar sort of trajectory that Jimmy had. He, he, it's so deep. And when you, when you hit it to his backhand wing, you don't get anything like a sniff of a short ball. It's always deep. You, f you feel like you're half following nearly every ball from his backhand side. Or when he hits his backhand to you. Yeah, you know, like Connors, there's very stiff elbows on the, that backhand, almost locked elbows. Here you go, David. Very consistent output. Oh, John Millman trying to work the stats monitor in the, the team zone, Team Australia. Constructed point and a good hold this time to 15 for Alex Tim and on Team Australia in the lead in the second set 2-1. Team Australia leads two games to one. Let me take a look at uh, winners for both players. 11 all. 
but it was the unforced error count early that really hurt Demonor and settled in, tidied that up. 14 to 9, that's the unforced error count. Demonor with 14, obviously. So we have to face a break point, Cam Norrie. Demonov struggling to build pressure on Team GB's service game. Well, if you call him Beecher, the captain of uh, Team Great Britain, you don't need to say too much at this point, do you? Wouldn't get in the way of, of uh, Cam Norrie's form right now. Certainly wouldn't mention anything about how well he's serving. That first, ser first serve in the first set. 71%. How about 80% in his opening service game Nine. of the second set? He's in great rhythm in that department, so leave him be, let him go. Talk about mixed emotions. Katie Bolter. Getting ready to play Isla Tomlanovich in the, the second match here, the women's singles. And her boyfriend's in the green and gold on the opposite team. Fifteen love. Stuck out a paw there for that volley. Good stab. No. But, uh, Alex had a good run onto the ball. Just overcooked it. Put it low. Seeing a different return to serve position now from Alex, a little deeper. But still unable Game to crack the code. But I like that move a lot. Two guns all. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I think it's a really hard one for Alex. And he returns a lot like a different era. So a lot of the modern player today is practicing that back there a lot. And we saw, you know, Daniil Medvedev was the guy that sort of changed that. He's a flat ball striker, but if you're flat like Alex is, you drop the ball short a bit too often. You have to really work hard on getting shape off that return to get depth, mm -hmm. to get yourself into that neutral position. I think that's where, if he goes back too much, that's what he opens up, which is what happened on that last point. I agree with everything you said, but my point isn't necessarily just to hit a quality return. Long. It's also to actually get Nora to start missing first serves. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go to work on his second serve. He's yet to see a second serve, um, you know, for, for a while it seems like. He's seen very few in this match. So sometimes it's just about being disruptive to your opponent. I remember Alex played Milos Raonic a few years back, the opening tournament of the year, the ATP Cup, and he was taking on Raonic's howitzer from right on top of the baseline. I mean, he's not afraid to stand in against anybody. We know that. Advantageous though, isn't it? If you can start to hold some of your service games a little easier, get to 40 love quickly, then this man might start thinking about that first serve percentage of his.
15. with an ace up. and keeps his uh, nose rather in front. It's 3-2, Team Australia. Team Great Britain have taken the opening sets games in games to four. Dimonor seems to be a little bit more engaged than what he was in the first set in the changeovers. Didn't really want to take any information, and he's often no. like that. But I think when he does get a little more animated at the side, I think he's lifting his form and engagement on the court during play. And we'll see what he does here, Jim. But he continues to try to change that position, as you have spoken about, to give Nori a different look. Got to get some second serves to be able to play with, potentially. At least get an opening point and see if he can build some pressure on the return game. Norrie serving, having taken the first set, 2-3. Here's a second serve and the opening point for Di Minor. from Team Australia. Oh. Right here's the first oh. bit of pressure. Oh. What a return. That was a phenomenal deep return from Demon Or Nori did well to fight it off. Team Menor now looking to finally crack on and get a break of serve at Love 30. Oh. A swinger. That ball was just cutting away. Team Menor chasing it to no avail. Really threw that toss way out to his left to get the racket head swinging around the outside of it. I just wonder whether he gives a little bit away of where he's serving there with the are. ball toss, Jim. But Dimino hasn't been able to pick that one up. That one he pulled back closer over him, which meant the only serve he really could have was down the tee. He wasn't going to go for the swinger.
40-13. That's a let off there for uh, Alex. Had a chance to get to break point, was in rally, and the unforced error count climbs one at an inopportune time. But full credit to Nori. Two big serves got him back to 30 all and out of the big jam. Ooh, what was that? It mean, looked like he was about to go for a drop shot and then saw that yes. Dimonor was on his way to... Memory serves, that's what your three-foot three putt looks like from time to time <laughs> when we're playing golf. That's very dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that one missed the hole by quite a ways. Bounce back though. Well, they're, they're two of the, the worst misses we've seen uh, yes. from the racket of uh, Norrie, and they've come in the one game. So, this is the type of opening that he wanted to avoid. He's given Alex a little bit of a sniff here. from Damon or pays off. Great discipline within the rally. Both players grinding it out, and Damon or toughs him out. And opportunity knocks for the first time in the match. Team Australia has a break point. from the local crowd. Bertram, please. Team Australia leads two games to two. So gets the break for 4-2, gets new balls to serve too, which will help him just that little bit, but just started to construct points a little differently, Demon or hasn't he? I think that's coupled, Todd, with the fact that Nori just dropped off his lofty perch just for a moment there. It was a combination. Oh. 
Well, the freedom's come back into the game of Demonor a little here. You know, he, his first... I hope we never underestimate the speed of his first step, Alex. He, instantly, he was... he was And great uh, anticipation as well, and that combination gets him there really early for this. That was, that was not a bad forehand from Nori, but he just... He had to do more with it, seeing he was outside of the court. There's a lot more patience in Dimonor this set. Yes, he's hit winners, eight of them this set. But the key for him is that in the first set, he was loose with the unforced errors, 12 of them. He's only had four this set. And with that, Norris felt the urge to do more, and he started missing. Demonor's come to life here, and the strategy has improved significantly in set two. He's just settled off. into it. And you're seeing that patience coupled with aggression when opportunity presents itself. And Nori is feeling it. The need to do more and not able to come up with it. Plays a set out a love game with an ace, and quickly this match has turned. Australia. 5-2, second set. Team Australia leads 5 games to 2. This is a part of the game for Damon Old that he's continually working on, trying to get more pop on the serve, changing the shape of the serve. He's always been quite flat coming around the outside of the ball. He's trying to get more kick on the ball to do that it's got to get more shoulder rotation but it's changing years and years of muscle memory to do that but it's getting there that's to try to give himself more weapon more free points take pressure off the game of having to rely so much on the foot speed. Well, didn't take a lot, did it? Just one opportunity to get into a game, and he built some pressure. Alex Demonor got the break of serve, and what looked like Cam Norrie and the cool control now finds himself serving to stay in the second Time. set Jim. yeah and that was the the last sequence with the, that set of tennis balls too which is when they're a little fluffier they're a little slower and Demonor was able to get into more rallies in that last return game when he was able to extract that break of serve with the assistance of a couple of loose mistakes from nori which we haven't seen up to that point so nori now try and hit the reset button get back to his high level of tennis and uh, see if he can extend this set.
So although Fitzy mentioned that Cam Norrie looks like he's played a dozen matches at the beginning of this event. Is there a little bit of the reality of some of the form slipping in here? The, you know, the, the mental side of the game where there is a drop all of a sudden? We're about to find out. Mm. We'll see. And Dimonor definitely lifted his game style and his strategy. But that's a miss that Nori made quite a bit of. I, I called one of his matches in the Cincinnati tournament last summer. He lost to Gael Monfils in his first match, and he made a lot of mistakes like that, lots of double faults. He was very sloppy for normally a very buttoned up player who doesn't give anything away. We saw a lot of that, so perhaps a little bit of that scar tissue of the second half of 2023 starting to appear here. A little bit of doubt creeping in, perhaps. Gives Demonor and Team Australia a set point. He'd love to finish it here. That would mean he could serve first in the opening game of the third. turns this match around for Team Australia, takes the second set, six games to two, and we are tied at one set all here at RAC Arena in Perth. was a sensational finish to set number two for Alex Dimonor. As we take a look at our second set summary there and Kem Norrie's service percentage coming off ever so slightly, but the difference, of course, he won 100% of her serves in in the first set, down to 76%, and it switched, in fact, for Dimonor. Yep. where he's at 92% when he gets that first ball in. The bottom line, the most important line, though, the unforced error count. Look at the discrepancy there. Norrie's climbing significantly he had only four in the opening set 13 there that was a little bit gifty from him and uh, Dimonor was more than happy to, to take it and he took a lot of the points with some brilliant play as well some stinging forehands down the line a backhand approach that got the initial break of serve but most of all there was patience with the aggression from Dimonor and that's what paid the biggest dividend because then Nori no, well, he just wasn't able to find the winners, and the unforced errors climbed. So, Ken Norrie just had quickly departed the court. He's on his way back to his team zone. as we get set for the third and final set of this opening match in Group C between Team Australia and Team Great Britain. Slightly tweaked format from last year. We played two singles, men's singles, women's singles, and then a mixed doubles to decide the event last year. If you remember, it was a best of five. We had a number one and number two singles player, and then the mixed doubles. But I think a good format and a nice tweet, Jim. Definitely agree. They were played over two days last year. It's a, it's a single session. We'll know who wins this tie here by the end of the night. All level, third set, Team Australia to serve. And the 
opening service game in these sets have been challenging for uh, Demonor. He was broken in the first game of the match and saved a break point the first game of the second set. Better start here. on uh, Alex Timonor, but one of the things that I think stands out in his game is his ability to understand when he has his opponent down and, and be able to keep them down and hold that momentum at his end of the court. Kind of go in, into a lockdown, if you like. And it, it's not dissimilar to the, the captain in Leighton Hewitt and what Leighton used to do. Great ability to tighten the screws and keep them that way. Keep focus, keep, keep the levels the same. And that's a fine. Opening serve, three aces to get the one love lead. First game, final turn. So one thing, if you looked at the, the intensity level of an Alex Demonor and you matched it up to a graph of Leighton Hewitt's intensity level and the consistency of it throughout matches, very similar. Almost a straight line across right around number 10 level. Different game styles, certainly, but uh, very much similar intensity levels. Do you think the, the celebrations after a big point win, quite match Leighton, Jim. What, what do you not think? Quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> not quite. Not quite. That was you were leading the witness there, Fitz. <laughs> <laughs> so Nari needs to hold that momentum by holding serve. Dropped his last two serve escapes. Beecher, team captain of Great Britain, up on his feet. And Nori, you don't often hear him, not a very vocal player, pretty much a businessman out there. But he's seemingly like trying to caffeinate his energy levels here, get himself pumped up.
That's exactly what the doctor ordered for Team Great Britain. A love hold. And he can settle just that little bit now. Cam Norrie. It's often an interesting part of a match, these early couple of games of a third and a final set, or even a fifth set, when someone's done the work to get there like Demon or did. He really lifted the intensity, as we've spoken about, was raised. And then you've got to try to maintain that. Sometimes you can feel it within the crowd. They take a little bit of a breather. Second serve. Norrie was trying to use the forehand and you can see they're trying to give himself room, but the ball chases onto his hip. So Australia remain on top in this final set. It's on serve. 2-1. Demonor leads. <laughs> well, as we've talked about, beautiful evening here in Perth. And around about 30 minutes or so away from Perth is Fremantle. Just 20 kilometres south of the city, it is the port town of Perth, I guess you could say. Swan River leads into Fremantle. Great place to go. You can see all the restaurants, bars, and so much to do and see when you come over to the west. And that sunset there right now is what we're experiencing outside of the stadium. It's been a beautiful summer's day. And there is the RAC Arena just on the edge of Perth CBD. Todd, I might head down to Fremantle just to see the famous statue there of the great Bon Scott, lead singer of ACDC, many years ago. So we talked about that intensity and everything that... These two players have had been great representatives of uh, their country, the pair of them. If you, you've got to put somebody out there for you to play for your life, or I would have put Leighton there at any time. And Alex has become one of those players as well. You know that they will give just every last drop of blood for their country. Yeah, he certainly turned this around, hasn't he? And uh, he looks the more likely at the moment. His form has improved. And Norrie's going to have to reset, as Jim said, come up with something pretty special to stop him now.
is such a different level of patience from Demonor than he started the match with. That forehand, he was just calmly striking it cross court eventually. Nori tried to bring him in with a drop shot, and that is a risky proposition against the speedy Aussie. He's just hanging on right now. All momentum has moved into Team Australia's side of the court. Yeah, there's a higher anxiety level in the, the box of the great British team. You know, Colin Pitch is on his feet. He's trying to urge him on there. You can see that the, the body language is sort of flipped, isn't it? Good tennis. But Fitzy at uh, courtside, you know, that first set was asking about the Nori forehand and the shape. It looked like he had Alex kind of jumping at the ball and it was in a, a, an awkward position. Has that changed at all? Or is it just Alex has got used to that, do you think? Yeah, I think he's more on top of the ball now. I think he's got used to the speed and uh, he's found his timing. It took a set, but he's certainly hitting the ball out of the middle more now. And I think there's no question, Todd, that because he missed more balls in the first set, I mean, Norrie felt more confident. He, he, he barely did make a mistake. I think four was the number. And and now he, his level has dropped off a few percentage points. Maybe until that game. One thing Norrie's doing much better this set so far. John, as he's only hit one unforced error. So he has tightened the screws on his side of the net a little bit, and he's just hanging in there, hoping uh, he gets a chance. And sometimes when you're not feeling it, that's all you can do. You can back off a little bit of your aggression, clamp down on the unforced error count, and uh, wait to get hot again. Enough with the volley, he was there, tried to hit the drop volley, but gave it too much air, so the ball just sat up. It was a simple pass, really, in the end. I think on this surface, you, you have to be very careful to overplay the drop volley because, because the court surface is so hard. The ball's going to bounce high unless you hit it perfectly. Just hit the regulation volley deep with a bit of heat on it, and you normally win the point, I think. You, I think it was a wrong choice there. Has more consequence, doesn't it? Each game does. When you get into the third set, to all, you feel the pressure mounting a little more. Each of these points are more crucial. In the first chance, Fitzy of Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. The crowd trying to play their part here in the arena. Seventh, eighth. Ace of the match for Demon Orc.
I'm still a believer in having an advantage in serving first, Jim. I'm not sure about you with your style of play, but if you can get your nose in front here, that, that Norrie should and probably will feel an elevated level of pressure just to hang on. Pressure building in this set. Team Australia on top, 3-2 on serve. stage of the match that it's uh, Kem Norrie that's going to have to lift and find a way to build the pressure because it, it, it's sitting in a, a comfort zone for Alex Dimonor at the moment. Pitsy Courtside mentioned with the, the ability to be serving first that keeps the pressure on Norrie. Cannot afford any slip ups here at this stage of this third and final set. Sweet Caroline about to be sung around the stadium here at the RAC Arena, lifting the mood with a bit of Neil Diamond. All being led by John Fitzgerald courtside. Come on, Fitzy, belt it out for us. I'm a Neil Diamond fan too, by the way. I saw him at Rod Laver Arena years ago, Jim. It was awesome. Never goes out of style, does it? <laughs> Are you waving your flag down there too, Fitzy? <laughs> I'm sitting just quietly in the corner where I've been told to sit. <laughs> so here's Cam Norrie. Serving. Took the opening set six games to four, dropped the second six two. Trailing two three now. First double fold of the match from Cam Norrie. You know, I can't help thinking, you know, Jim, when you speak, I always listen. And those five matches he won from in the second half of the year only, that must affect your, your psyche at times. And it looks like it's affecting him a bit here. This is where Nori has to tell himself that he's turned over a new leaf. The new season's getting started. He's put last year's season behind him and he's a new player again. He's back to who he, he was in the first half of 2023 when he was so tough to beat. Beat Alcaraz in the finals of Rio de Janeiro and Clay. This guy is good, Cam Nori. He just lost it in the second half and he's trying not to lose it here in this final set. It feels precarious. This is where he's facing two opponents right now. He's facing a, a Demonor who has changed his game style within this match and has become a much tougher proposition and he's also fading facing the the scar tissue of all of those lost matches and and the manner that he lost so many of them by beating himself which is not very cam nori-esque Yeah. 
So here's a break point for Demon or he, he didn't look like missing a forehand like that in the first set to me. It, it, this is a pretty amazing sort of turnaround in belief slash doubt. Thank you. He looks like he wants to get in and finish the point a bit quicker too. Like he, I, you know, he was content in the first set because he thought Demon was going to miss. And now that Alex is not, he, he looks to me like he wants to finish the point earlier. A bit anxious there to get to the net. It was a good play in the end, but a bit of anxiety. Turn and some offense, uh, defense into offense rather from Nori there. Well, some amazing ball striking from Cam uh, Nori, but also yeah, anticipation. Yeah. Being in the right place for that shot when Demonor was attacking on the backhand and went cross court, the line was open. And speaking of line, oh. that is a sliver of it on the winner from uh, Nori. Duration heading towards seven minutes. And Nori's first serve percentage has finally dropped off. He's under 50% this set after serving over 80. Struggling with the ball toss. Yeah. Actually, which is sort of strange. He's losing it out to the right, and there comes the inconsistency. Racket face smothering the ball. You get a different part of the ball all the time, and great servers tend to do the opposite of that.
So sometimes when you're a little bit tight, you're a little bit nervous, the, the best way to break through, I think, Jim, is to do what he's doing. You know, Fitzy said there's a little bit of anxiety, and I agree with that, but you've, sometimes you've got to play yourself into the victory. You sit back and hope when you haven't had a lot of matches under your belt, you're not going to get it done. And he's taking it up to Demon Ore here. We're trying to move forward and finish it net a little more often than he has. And he finds a way to hang on the service. A big hold for Team Great Britain. Three games on. Let's see how Demonor responds after that, because that was a significant chance. He, he knew he had him under pressure, not able to seal the break. Gesture there, do you see that? Keep yourself forward. Is that just to get himself up in the court or is it to get himself more into the net? I, I think more to maybe transfer his weight, you know, get, make sure he doesn't hold back and play that forehand off the back foot and drop it short, maybe, but just move forward, have a bit of momentum through the ball. Maybe to follow a few into. He's, he's done that a little bit in the last couple of games. He doesn't want that one. He, when, he, when he goes back, his body weight moves backwards. He'll drop that forehand short. And you know Demon will finish this one way or the other. On the back foot, it drops short, and he will finish it. He may not make it, but most of the time he will. Didn't make the mistake of going back cross court with that approach shot this time. That cost him in the last game. The open court gets to 15 all. Both players feeling the physicality of this match now and taking some time with the towels to uh, reset the heart rate. Big stress test here for Diminar, 30 all. term we use for that is a choke because that's what that was middle of the net rally ball backhand at 30 all that is the tension of the moment getting to Cam Nori. he's not the first tennis player to feel that nor will he be the last oh, for some of us it was quite prevalent <laughs>
That's the Woodbridge tactic there. <laughs> Lures the error out of Murray, does Demon Oren. Team Australia keep in front here in the third and final set. Four games to three. New balls, please. Great hold, mate. Come on, let's go. Oh, Tom Fitzgerald there was alluding to the fact if you don't have a top spin back end, you have to vary the depth of your slice back end. <laughs> and that was something I talked about a little earlier with Demon Or. He has the ability to change it up with the slice back end. He has a very, very good variation of speed, spin. He has the ability to keep himself in the point, float one deep, but he also can approach off it. And he started to use it a little more in this third set. And that was a good bit of a tactic there that drew the error from Norrie. But Certainly a different tension and quality of play in this third set from both players. Yeah, and it's not brain surgery, is it, Todd? It's, it's just a bit of variation. You know, if you, if you give the opponent the same ball time and time again, uh, it's, it's a little less difficult to handle. But if you change the, the speed, the pace, the depth, it's a little bit harder. Getting to the closing stages of this all-important opening men's singles in Group C of the United Cup for 2024. Australia's Alex Dimonor with his nose in front on serve 4-3. Dropped his opening service game of the match. Oh. Wasn't able to recoup that in the first set. Nori took the opening set, six games to four in 35 minutes. And then Dimonor finally got the break of serve to go up 3-2 in set number two and raced away with it in the end six games to two as evening falls here in Perth and what has been a spectacular day for tennis We're inside the RAC arena wonderful venue Cam okay, has got new balls here serving to stay in this match at 3-4 from the team zone of Team Australia. He Keeps just, himself in the point. You go, Jim. Yeah, he's just so speedy and then really nice little scrape off the bottom. And early pressure on Team GB at love 15. Not a lot of room to roam here at 3-4. Very noticeable here. Fitzy, how lively these new balls are at this change over here. Yeah, and uh, he, he did serve pretty well uh, on, at the first change of balls uh, late in the first set as well. So maybe it suits him. He, look, he looks a little shaky though, doesn't he? Than he did in the first set. He's his confidence is not quite as high as it was. Big moments. Oh. Like Nori's ball Daniel. clipped the line. Yep. A little loopy forehand. Timonor perhaps thinking it was going long. And then his shot did go long. That's Alex's forehand. Drifted a little bit. Nori come up with some first serves. He was so good in that department in the opening set, and he's fallen off in set three. No, he couldn't get that one back, but he 
gave it an almighty effort. I think he might have broken a shoelace. Moving so quick there and trying to slide into the ball. Right about there, I suspect. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dimonard's shoes is broken. He has allowed time to change the shoes. Thank you. You know, Jim, I'm very confident that Todd would never have broken a shoelace. <laughs> he was so pristine. The same as I never actually yeah. dived. The only time I hit the ground was when I slipped and fell over. Yeah, he's still pristine. Yeah. Like, there wouldn't have been enough sliding and moving. And... There was no athleticism, Pitsy. He'd, pre he'd prefer to lose the point than uh, no, you know, not, look, not look perfect. Are you guys done yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is remarkable, the, the speed. I mean, that was ridiculous from Demonor tracking down all those overheads. But when you slide and, and use the brakes, you know, you almost need a shield for your shoelaces. We've seen uh, people like Stefano Tsitsipas go through pairs and pairs of shoes in one match. I remember he played a final in Washington, D.C. against Nick Kyrgios years ago. Nick won that match in the final, but Nick also had to actually go grab some shoes for from Steph's camp in the corner and hand deliver it to him during the match because Steph kept breaking his shoelaces. Adidas eventually made a, a shoe with a zip up that covered the shoelaces for him to stop that for a while, but it, uh, it's something that these guys have to deal with. They have to bring lots of extra gear and uh, they're allowed time to change it. And we're back in business. Snorri, game point at 40-30. It's Demonor who gets the shorter ball and is aggressive. Takes time away from Cam Norrie and a, a yes. grueling point. Short backswing inside of the baseline, up on the bounce. That's where he takes the time away from his opponent. Back to Juice. service game for Cam Norrie. And he manages to hang on once again. First set was 35 minutes long, second set 38 minutes long, and at four all here in the third set, they're over 40 minutes of play. So this is getting a little bit more grueling. And the pressure is certainly mounting here. With men being tested on serve.
It's almost as if uh, you sense Norris putting so much in and hanging on and holding his service game that his level drops when he comes into Demon or service game. Another really basic unforced error there. There's another really, so that's what I'd call 12 to 6 in the unforced error count in this set between the two. A clean game holds to love and the pressure now on Norrie. When he comes back, he's going to have to serve to stay in this match for Team Great Britain. And Fitzy, uh, it was an, an interesting change of ends there. It took a while for him to get down to the booth, really thinking about the scenarios. Cam Norrie now. Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, Alex has got his attention. <laughs> There's no question. To it. It's been a great match, really. I mean, a little, a few ups and downs. Uh, it hasn't been perfect from either player, but Jeter played their fair share of really good stuff. And uh, I, I just think the momentum is more now in the Aussies' favour. I mean... Cam Norrie can still jump up and grab this match, no doubt about it. It's it's not over, but um, I think the momentum a little bit on Demonor's side here. Well, important stage is coming now in this opening men's singles in the United Cup, the 2024 edition. It is Group C in action for the first time in a night session in Perth. Great Britain taking on Australia, because the other Lauren. member of this group is the United States, led by Taylor Fritz and Jessica Pagula. But it's Alex Dimonor out of the team zone for Team Australia. And Cam Norrie collecting the ball, serving to stay in this third set at 4-5. Forehand dropping short, Todd. It was a it, steery one, wasn't it? Yeah, if there's been a, a, just an inkling of a, an Achilles heel in this match for him as it's gone on, it is that the forehand has been dropping a bit short, and that, that's that's dangerous against Dingwall. He will attack that instantly. It's just second nature to him. So the first point there, mighty important. Well, he did it in the first set. He was serving above 75% at one stage, and he needs to find it now.
stuff. It was uh, Demonor who fell off the length of shot on two occasions there. building you could hear John Melman say from Team Australia working hard within the point there he is been over here it's his last Australian summer of tennis before he makes his retirement he working hard as he always has but big point 30 all oh. Oh, that, that was just first class Gee, a wonderful return off that very good serve. And you'd think that Demonor would be in the point, but uh, that half volley on the rise was as good as we've seen all day. Or all night, I might say. Great control. No, oh, and he gets the luck too, Fitzy. Well, he did and he needed it. Five, Can't buy on. that. It was a heck of a pass, wasn't it, Todd? I mean, he, he, Demonor did everything right there. He took speed off the ball, hit it with angle across so that it dipped low. Took a bit of luck. So five games all. Final set. Well, he had the opportunity to Cameron Norrie there. He, he got the ball he wanted. It was presented to him, and he likes that off forehand. But these moments are really uh, important. The heart rate's a bit higher because of the, the value of these points at the end of this match.
Well, there's the change up. We haven't seen a drop shot from Demon all the entire match, basically. Well, that took courage and uh, presence of mind there to hit that. I mean, you're right, we haven't seen it. And he just sensed that that was the right moment. So he doesn't think twice, Demon Or He had Norrie deep in the court. And that takes feel. There was backspin on that too, which made that ball sit down for Norrie. to six. Will it be a tie break? We'll find out. Norrie coming back after the break to serve to stay in it once again. Team Australia, 6-5. of uh, Team Australia from the bench. It can be interesting when you play at home. Sometimes you're able to use that energy to the best of your abilities. Other times you can feel stress and pressure by it. Demon or coping well with that here tonight in what is almost a capacity crowd here at the RAC Arena in Perth. A great opening night. The energy's been brought and so is the quality of tennis. Alex Dumanot, game away from potentially winning the first point for Team Australia, but Cam Norrie has got plenty to say about that. He's been hanging in incredibly well on serve, Fitzy. Well, he has, and, and he's fought his internal demons a little bit, I think, in this third set. So to his credit, he showed strength of character as Norrie because he has been coming from behind the whole third set, and uh, no breaks of serve yet. Gee, there was some quality stuff there from Demon at the end of that the previous game. You can just feel the, the, the pace of shot, though, lifting in the last couple of games. So Norrie found a bit more on the forehand. It's forced the play. Well, they've got to let it all hang out here. Sure do. There's not much future if they don't. At full stretch, that takes racket head control. Beautiful volley. From a quality player, this is a, an excellent pass. Look at that stretch off the middle of the strings. That's a super hole to serve from Cam Norrie. Under pressure. Lifts his level. Holds to love. And probably a little bit of justice prevailing, Todd. I mean, it, it should go down to a breaker after they both showed character in this match. 
But most of the set, you would have said that it was Alex Dimonol who has yep. been on top. But yep. the last two games or so, Norris lifted. He's found more pace, the forehand's done a little bit more damage, and he's decided that he's going to keep coming forward. They're all good signs leading into a tie break. What will separate them? We will find out. Well, I was surprised that he moved forward after that. I, I'm not sure you'd always see Cameron Norrie come forward after that lob, but it was the right move. Good sneaky play. He gets his nose in front. Didn't do a lot with the volley, did he? Maybe a little lucky that Alex dropped that lob short, but he took him by surprise. Beecher up out of his seat. So the first mini break for Team GB. the net by a whisker One on. and a thin whisker at that here's a look at it yeah Ooh. and then he break back and serve again have similar tactics now it's just any opportunity to get forward they're going to come so imperative that they don't drop the ball short either player here or the opposition will be in Getting perilously close for Dimnor serve. He's lifted again, it seems, doesn't yeah, it? Definitely. Wonderful return there with depth. Instantly got himself back on an even keel in that in that uh, point scenario. And there's been times in this match where he's had trouble with that forehand when his body weight moves back, backwards. But no mistake there. Mini break. Oh. Well, he's busted this match wide open in the space of uh, three points here. Has Nori? Well, this was uh, Demon or trying to sneak in because he felt he was going to get that reply, but that was a very good slice down the line, wasn't it? He didn't try to overplay it, and he's caught Demon or off guard, and he's got two mini breaks now. Cam Nori.
stood up, stood tall. Wonderful defence from Cam Norrie, but he couldn't hold the final winner from the Australian. Well, I think saving possibly their best till last, Todd. Yeah. These points look like they're going to be won, not lost. Finishing with winners. Changing after six points. 4-2. Great Britain lead. Isla Tomlanovic, Katie Bolter still to come in the women's singles following this match. And then a mixed doubles to follow that. foot wrong here has he in the last 10 minutes he's been awesome got to hold these two points on serve demon on Lifted his sights on the return. He's hitting with such beautiful depth now. He's not giving Demonor a chance to attack and move forward. And that's caused Alex to go for a little more, try to be more aggressive. He's tried to sneak in. He's trying to play shots that have now led to this. Four match points for Team Great Britain and Cam Norrie. And there it is. Gives it up with a double fault. What an effort from Norrie. Did everything just to hang in that third set. And then when it got to the back end of it, raised his level. And he'll be well pleased with that result. Alex Timonol down the end of Team GB. And the match, Fitzy played in great spirits, as you would expect between these two very highly competitive athletes. Yeah, and high quality individuals too, by the way. Um, really good stuff that was. I mean, there was a few ebbs and flows, wasn't there, from both players during the match. Norrie started really well, Alex not so. Um, but once Alex had turned that second set around, uh, on with you, Todd, he seemed like he had more momentum. He seemed like uh, he just had his nose in front the whole way, which he did because he served first, but he looked like he might win. But to Norrie's credit, he was fantastic, particularly at the end. Here he is to chat with Jim Courier. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Cameron Norrie, opening match of the season. Cam, well done. It was not easy. You started off exceptionally well. Great first set, and you had to know you played Alex. He was going to put up a fight. What was the key for you to get over him in the end today? Yeah, I really had to dig deep and, and play very brave in that third set. And um, he came out uh, at the end of the second set. He was firing, and I, I couldn't match his level. And I had to, to dig deep and, and really play to win in that, that tie break. And I found good depth in my forehand, and the balls got a little bit older. Um, and I really had to hit the ball. So. 
Yeah, it's always tough playing Alex. He's a good friend of mine, and and um, yeah, we always have to, we always have battles, and we always have to. I knew I had to run a lot today, so and I did. So it was a good match and a uh, great atmosphere. Great to start the year uh, with a W. This is the second consecutive year that you and Alex actually have played in this first match here at the United Cup. Last year you beat him in straight sets here. He returned the favor. He beat you in, in Canada. You got him today. When you play Alex, what kind of mentality do you have to have when you come to the court against him? Yeah, I practice with Alex a lot and um, we know each other's games very well. So um, we're kind of always anticipating where the other, other one's going to hit the ball. So. Um, he plays very close to the baseline and he's absorb absorbing the pace really well. So um, you have to be ready to, to run and, and really hit the ball with good depth. Otherwise, you have no chance against Alex. And um, luckily, I was able to serve really well today, um, hit my spots, especially in that first set. Um, so yeah, it was nice to get over the line. Okay, so you've put Team Great Britain in a great spot. They're up 1-0, but there are a couple more matches to come. Tell us a little bit, for the, the fans here who may not m know your team as well as you do, tell us a little bit about what they're going to see here in the women's singles and the mixed doubles from uh, Team GB. Yeah, it's been, it's been good for, for all our team. We got here pretty early, and uh, luckily I, was, I had some family here in, in uh, Perth, and I was able to spend Christmas Day with them, and, and uh, it was a good barbecue and really enjoyed it. So we're here early. Uh, they're, they're watching up there, so nice for them to come out and support today. And, and uh, so, yeah, we're all here early, and, and uh, I think Katie and, and Ali is going to be a, a really uh, good match. They both, both hit the ball so well, um, so I think the ball is going to be coming through very flat. And, um, yeah, I think it's a good, pretty 50-50 match. You know, obviously, Ali has been out with a bit of injuries, and, and Katie's just come back into the top 100. So I, I'm really looking forward to watching, supporting, and... And uh, yeah, the, the night of tennis has just begun, so it's, it's going to be a good one. Well, congratulations to Cam Norrie and Team Great Britain. Much more to come here. The women's singles up next. Indeed it is. And work to do for Australia. Ola Tomlanovic will need to uh, come out and win that one. And, and you heard Cam Norrie just talking about the comeback from her. So it's going to be a tough one. Katie Bolter with the chance to seal it for Great Britain if she could win her singles as we take a look at the match summary of the men's singles here and first serve percentages they were very high at the opening of the match for Cam Norrie in that first set and then dropped a little but unforced errors have a look at that 30 to 25 and a lot of those came in set two and the first half of set three for Norrie and then he tightened up his game to play a brilliant end and a fantastic tie break to seal that third set seven games to six so it is team great britain off to the great start here at the rac arena in perth they lead australia one love 